<laughs> what? Again, what? Why wasn't this a movie? But here's the thing. If it was just a movie, this be it, and then it'd be no, like... No, no, no. No, see, there was three. They were supposed to be making three of them. And let's be real, this would have been two hours instead of just an hour. Oh, my God. Okay, I can see that. Three Rick movies. Six hours, like six hours total. Basie's going to have a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, there's so much to talk about. Holy shit. People ain't Here's ready. Thing. People ain't I ready. Amazing the vibe I'm feeling, but it's an outsider perspective and busy and tsunami from the insider's perspective. And I just like that's really cool. And, and, and really cool. you were even having questions mentioning Omaha. Like, like, are we all set to just dive into this, Sam? Are we good? We good? I de- we let good, me bro? tell you something. I definitely have a lot to say. Let me tell you. Yo, we good, Sam? No. Sam, um, busy is giving me uh, giving uh, my uh, vibe from last of us. Like. <laughs> I have hey, look, so many things. Look, to Sam, to I'm actually uh, told to uh, so many things. Listen, Sam, I'm told to telework tomorrow, so we can go ahead and uh, binge the next two episodes. Let's <laughs> no, go. I don't gotta work to like oh, five oh, tomorrow. Please, calm down. Hey, yo, calm you don't down. just throw no, Sam. You don't just throw something <laughs> at, like this at us and be yeah, like so and, and expect me to be numb I, about it. No, I no, no. So, oh my no. God, no, God so in heaven, dog. Yo, yo. My God. <laughs> I have that so many fire. things fire. I had to say. Please no idea. Hold up. I, listen. Okay. I for, I, Jesus hold up. Christ. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> no, Sam. Hold up. Sam, <laughs> Sam, Sam, real quick, real quick, real quick. I asked for walk. I asked for Walking Dead perfection. Walking Dead gives me uh, uh, like Dead City. <laughs> I, I said perfection. You give me Daryl Dixon. I asked for perfection. <laughs> you give me this. Thank you. <laughs> Emotional damage. And we got five left, bro. That's insane. Okay. All right, everybody. Breathe uh, for a second. Okay. Okay. I have... <laughs> Breathe, Breathe, Breathe. Breathe. Let me introduce everybody. Oh, no. Yeah, we go into this. Okay. Man, fuck an introduction, dog. Let me out of here. Oh, okay. God. I'm ready right now. I got a tingle in my left arm. <laughs> I'm ready right now, dog. <laughs> oh, this my oh, Lord. Oh, no. Episode two. Episode two. Okay, wait. This, 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 let me introduce this, okay? Sam, I need a right. minute and I need a drink. Yeah, I need, I need some some. <laughs> Go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, oh, <man>. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm getting some water, bro. <sighs> I almost just choked on myself. <laughs> you don't do that. That's all I'm saying. That that's all I'm gonna say. You don't show me greatness like this. This is why listen, I freaking love Walking Dead. Listen, listen. Right, man. My, my goodness, my man's lost his mind. How am I going to do this? How? I'm just a simple man. You know what I mean? I can't believe you guys have done this. My god. I don't think... I, man... Like, literally, what the fuck? For real, for real. Yeah. What even? But, how, also, how long was that episode? That's cool, man. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> or, or as, um... As one of the characters from uh, Kevin Smith's Clerks would be like, "That's beautiful, man." Oh God! All right, I'm back from a pee break. Bro. Are y'all good? I don't know. Is, is I think I'm back? still holding my pee, so let's just get over. Still let's here? Just talk. No, I well, I think Eris. Eris and not... Dizzy have literally been vanquished. <laughs> they are no longer with us. Uh, oh, RIP for them. Um, and to give you context, that was only 55 minutes. That's it. Oh, was wow. it? It definitely felt like it was pushing an hour. For sure. 
Okay, I'm back. Uh, damn. <laughs> um, oh. All right, I'm gonna just reset and push this. And... Oh, that's funny. That's good. But yeah, fucking let's let's go. You know what I'm saying? Let's <laughs> let's do this. I'm so I'm so re- I've never been more ready to give an opinion. I need uh, <laughs> I need Sam to uh, to put the camera back on his real Put the camera on. Y'all, hold on. No, 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 just real quick. I gotta show you something. So, Sam, this is a special occasion for like in the spirit of perfection. I had to break out the I had to break out the carbonated. No, this is carbonated carbonated water. Not carbonated. This is not carbonated. This is straight up peach flavored water. What? I had I had to break it out. Okay. In the spirit of flavored water. Yes. My All God right. in heaven. All right, so Busy is ready. I'm going to have to make some kind of cool intro <laughs> for this. I'm going to wait to do that later. So I'll put that in to our review later on when I do it. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? This is our yeah, actual yeah. review, yeah, nah, nah, not nah. our reaction. Okay. Yeah. Look, yo, Busy, you good? You just take a swig. <laughs> yo, Busy just got lit. Right <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Just got lit. <laughs> Hold up, hold up, Busy. Did you get hold up, Did you get water or did you get a that drink? Water. <laughs> Listen, this is oh, the time. Was, Let's get it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No right. bullshit. I thought you couldn't see me. Oh, I can see. I was <laughs> like, this is my boy. Hold on, Listen, hold on. let's go. I had to make a choice between. Oh, you see, you Damn. Didn't let's go. <laughs> they turned up for real. Let's go. Fireball. Let's go, Five. Busy. All right. Let's go. Starting in three. Two, one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to talk about The Walking Dead, and not just any old Walking Dead, the ones who live. Michonne and Rick are back. This is episode one. If you have not watched the episode yet, go and check it out, because what we're about to kind of talk about, what we're about to gush about, it's going to be it's gonna be rough to kind of go through. So go and watch the episode, come back to this, and we're going to go through it. I'm going to go and talk about a lot of things, but I got to bring our panels on. First up, on deck from Three Black Geeks, Eris. What's going on, man? What is up? What is up? This man has brought me from the abyss to be here. If it wasn't for Eris, I would have uh, I would have died a long time ago with this. So, so guess what, J- uh, like JVS fans? You're welcome. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome. So give, give him a, a golf clap. And subscribe to Three Black Geeks in the Christian Bar below. You have no Next idea up. how much I have been bugging this man to get back into The Walking Dead. Yeah. yeah. I kept yeah. telling you he's been missing out on greatness that leads up to said greatness. But go off, King. Uh, I digress. We're going to keep moving. Next up on the list, Busy. What's up, dude? Yo, Busy is busy right now. <laughs> That shit was beautiful. Busy's buzzing. Beautiful. Nah, nah, I'm feeling the busy buzz, but that shit was beautiful. Dude, I don't I don't even know what else to say, bro. I'm ready for episode two, but I'm, I'm going to let y'all do the intro so we can just go crazy and talk about this. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Busy. Always, always, bro. <laughs> Next on deck is a man that's only seen the first season of The Walking Dead, but came out the cut. Ronan Unchained. What's up, dude? Um, Enduring Survival. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, yeah, this is... This is... Wow, man. This is... I, I am, uh, let me just say this. As from, from what y'all will see from our reaction, I am so happy for Tsunami, for for, for, for um, Ares, for, for Busy. I'm so happy for them. For me to watch the energy that's glowing from them, it's, it's a cool thing. And this is why I... I even though, like Sam said, I've only seen the first season, I respect The Walking Dead from afar, and I like the energy. So, yeah, man. Um, yeah, fuck. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> man, trying to get them demonetized. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> you, you're, you're good. You're good. And last but not least, Amanda, I never thought I would ever be talking about this show or anything connected to this franchise ever again. And you're not going to see his face, but you will see a circle of his face, Jarrell's Alexander. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am here to talk about um, this thing 
uh, <laughs> that we that we just watched, and I have a lot of things to say about said thing. Actually, <laughs> he's back. <laughs> dot, dot, I'm, dot. Back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Somebody's gonna gift that. Yeah, Somebody's gotta gift that. Yeah. I'm back. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and kind of dive right into this. So a lot of you guys uh, were highly anticipating this. Some people have been waiting six years for this. Some people were anticipating this. Others like me that kind of died off from The Walking Dead for a long period of time. We anticipated the idea of this potentially being like a three movie deal. They kind of moved away from that, and then it was kind of like oh, okay, they came out with these different spinoff series, the Daryl Dixon Show. They did the um, Dead, City. Dead City with Negan, with Maggie. And then we found out that we were actually going to get this Rick and Michonne, but it is going to be a series. So I had a lot of questions with it, but at the same exact time, it's like the magnetism of these two amazing actors being back in this role alone had everybody anticipating this to be interesting at the very least. What we didn't anticipate is the direction and the execution of the first set episode. I'm going to let everybody kind of gush about their perspectives on what they just saw, but then we'll go and dissect the episode as a whole. So I'm going to give this one first to Ronan because Ronan has no preconceived notions about any of this. Like he has no start or beginning or end. He just has what he just saw. So I'm going to let Ronan go first and then I'll let everybody go through and then we'll go and dissect the episode from start to finish and then we'll go through. Um, I'd like to quote uh, Tarantino's dialogue from Django Chain. Be like, listen, you have my curiosity. Now you have my attention. Um, <laughs> I, this was, a, was wow, what, what a first episode to kick in and be like, oh yeah, boom, here it is. And as, again, as someone who, who from afar respected this, this franchise and the show, um, I you know I, I heard when that when season seven episode one popped up and boom all that stuff I I remember when the, the bridge thing with 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 uh, I found them boom <laughs> but um I have to admit that the the, the unique thing about it, it's not just cool seeing the same same actors I've seen on promos and YouTube ads and all this stuff and posters and whatnot but the fact that I'm I'm in, interested to see where the world they're surrounded by right now so this whole um, I, I, well, I don't know what the CRG, whatever they're called, whatever. Yeah. I'm intrigued by that. <laughs> I'm intrigued to see how that plays out. And the fact that Rick is is like going, I don't know, like John Wick vibes now. Like he's just with, with the costume, with everything. It is unique. And um, again, you said it was a 55 minute episode. And yeah. yet at no point I was looking at the watch. At no point I was engaged the whole time to see what was going to happen. And uh, a heck of a cold opening. And more of a wild ass ending yeah no absolutely uh i'm gonna give it to both busy and eris at the same time i'll let them kind of dissect what their thoughts were because they have been fans from the beginning and they have not stopped so i'll let you you guys go and then me and Darrell be the tag off because we're the opposite of that so go ahead uh busy go ahead eris you go first brother all right first of all that opening <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. The opening alone was so cold yep. and i'm like son we're not even we're not even eight minutes in and they did the thing right i don't want to say what it is because uh we're not spoiling correct yeah this is spoiler free it's, oh it's spoiler it's, okay it's, all right all right all right all right so we get so, okay so we're not even eight minutes in <laughs> cuts his hand off <laughs> I said, at first I said, this is a dream. This has got to be a dream. This has got to be a dream because for the past 10, like 10, to, like 10, 11, 12 years, they kept teasing and teasing and teasing Rick losing his hand in the main show only for them to never do it. Right. And here he finally does it. And it was, we didn't even get to the opening yet. <laughs> so, so I'm like, okay, how is the rest of this, the rest of this show going to go? And it just doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. It goes from like we're going zero to one hundred. This is like cold opening, and then after that, ball like balls to the wall, insane. <laughs> like everything was paced like perfectly for a six episode miniseries. This was properly paced. So busy. I, I, I'm gonna give the. I'm gonna hand it off to you now. Man, it, I mean, 
I, I know this is kind of jumping the gun a little bit, but to hear um, Ronan talking about things, coming up with theories, and a lot of the things we already know because we've seen some of the other shows, it just got me so excited. And again, losing the hand, man, this is something that people have been waiting for for years. I mean, this was in the comics. I mean, of course, it happened very early on. And yeah. then here we are, you know, years later, I mean, with them doing it in a different manner, him cutting off his own hand to free himself to kind of get away. And he doesn't even make it that far. He made it further in the post credit scene or at the end scene of the season 11 finale. So it's like, it's crazy for him to kind of do that for nothing, if you will. But right. um, it's just the fact that they did it is just insane to me. But um, Again, I know we're going to get there, but all the different references about uh, killing walkers for energy or talking about Omaha and just all these little things that kind of finally connected everything was just amazing. Because, I mean, I've been watching the like all the spinoff shows and it's like just to have some little connection has been something that I've been waiting for for so long. I mean, all the different theories we've, we've had uh, uh, for all the last few years talking about what if this character crosses over or what if we get this reference in this show and it's just like to finally see kind of a little bit come together and get references from other shows and different things like that it's just been it, oh man it was kind of surreal so to finally have the first episode in our hands it's it's just an unreal experience and and they totally outdid my expectations like i knew i was gonna love it solely to see michonne and, and rick on screen but with everything that they've done in this episode alone, I mean, I, I, I just, it's unbelievable that they're going to be able to top it in the next five episodes. Like I'm, I'm in awe already. I, I agree. That's what I hate. I, I hate that more that we got all of this greatness in one episode. And I'm like, how do you do this for the next five? I mean, you got to come with it at this point. Cause how many seasons of the main show have we seen where they start off the first episode of a season and it's a total banger. And then after that, everything, you know, just kind of slows down, you know, all the way up into the mid season finale. And then the uh, mid, then the beginning of the second half of that season, everything goes crazy. Only, like, only for it to slow down a little bit more just to build up to that season finale. And I'm really hoping so far they've done uh, every, like all the other spinoffs have been great. They haven't really had, if they ever did a slowdown, it was always at least one episode. They dedicated to like a full slowdown to be focused on one particular character or whatever, but they always try to keep the pace going separate from the main show. And which, that's, that's one yeah. thing that I'm, I'm, I'm curious about because we dove into, again, we're going into spoilers. We finally got the little reunion between the two, but I know that we're going to have an episode that highlights Michonne and her journey leading up to that. Cause I mean, we had, this was an entire Rick episode. What we got with Michonne was just dream sequences after dream se sequences. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, this isn't just Rick show. This is a Rick and Michonne spinoff series. So I don't know if it's going to be episode two, episode three, but we're going to highlight what Michonne has been doing up to this point. Cause we know that she gets introduced to an entire new crew so, like, yeah. I am so interested to see where that comes from. Where right. the hell did no, she get this gear? Time out, time I mean, out, I'm so out. ready. I'm ready. Y'all burning your mic. You're burning your mic. Time <laughs> out. Time out. Time out. All right. Do you know something, Sam? Do you know something? You're smiling. You know Sam always knows something. <laughs> anyway. Um, I give him I give him. Now credit. me and Jarrell are up. Because <laughs> we I'm both sorry. quit <laughs> the show effectively. And if it hadn't been for Eris, I wouldn't even have looked at the spinoffs, to be quite Which, honest. I literally just crazy. caught up to season 10. I just caught up to season 10. I just saw the last Negan episode. So Again, why is he the host? For me, <laughs> for me <laughs> like some of my most amazing reactions and traumas and emotions came from The Walking Dead. Like, that's never been a lie. But... I have not seen it excel to the levels and the depths from an emotional level, from a stakes level, like off rip, they didn't stop. They kept progressing. They kept the pace going really well. And to be quite honest with you, I actually cared. I actually cared about characters I shouldn't care about. Like this guy, this is military dude. Like he's spitting a whole bunch of exposition and stuff that it's like, okay, why should I care about this? But the way that it was working, the way that it flowed, the way that the story progressed, like I actually 
cared. And I haven't cared about any of these storylines in a very long time. I didn't care about half these characters. The only reason why I cared about some of the characters is because they're OG characters. Because I knew where they came from. And I love where they are now. But that's it. Every other character was kind of woven in. It was like sometimes they were okay, sometimes they were... But this episode concentrated on not just character delivery, but progression of story and world building. Because it it it's initially spanned off five years after the bridge sequence. So we don't know for the amount of time that the whole episode lasts, which I thought that was actually really well done and executed. But for me, yes, it was it was really well done. But I'm gonna let Jarrell go next. Uh, and then we'll go and break down the episode from the beginning all the way to the end. And then once we get on the end, we'll stop right there. All right. Uh, Jarrell. Okay. Um <laughs> Oh man! All right, so this premiere episode. Well, okay, so there there are things that I liked about this episode. To be honest with you, uh, I think there were some likable things as a fan. Uh, big fan of The Walking Dead. Long time ago though, but however, I thought that this episode was really bad though. Oh my God. <laughs> there's, Wait, and what? There's, and there's so, there's so much there's so much to address that um i guess we'll just have to just go layer by layer so i'll I'll, pro- I'll probably just stop there for now but that that's that's a good like cap of my my thoughts nah. go 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 no go crazy i want to hear what you have to say why am i not surprised well i mean i got <laughs> i got no, it, all kind, it, i got all kinds good. of stuff to say but i don't know how sam wants to like structure the no the no episode. no we're, we're going from the beginning of the episode all the way to the end so it's all good so the beginning of the episode starts off with first sequence. We have Rick. He's kind of looking out from the skate from a room that we don't really know where he's at. And he's looking at a TV and they're talking about death. They're talking about like a loss of lives. And he's got like this shot of glass and he looks like he's effectively about to cut himself. And then they go and say fast forward from five years from the bridge and they made this interesting transition from the back of his head to doing that to initially going. And he's out there trying to make it through. And as he's trying to go and make it through, <coughs> killing these walkers that are literally on fire, that's when we got the scene that we got. So what would you guys think about from the very intro to the moment that he's out there and he effectively cuts his freaking arm off to try to get away? What would you guys thoughts? Okay, this was something <clears throat> um, I really liked, actually. The whole uh, hand-cutting sequence. I, I actually thought that it was like some weird, um, I don't know, like vaguely like Evil Dead-ish kind of vibes. <clears throat> something like that. Um, but that was actually, it was actually weirdly kind of dope. There, it almost felt sort of Walking Dead blended with sci-fi uh it was it was real fucking out there but i i enjoyed it i genuinely was taken aback because i i knew immediately these these niggas got some tight budgets okay this is like <laughs> some fucking dream sequence all right this is happening niggas <laughs> you muted sam you muted sam yeah so eris you were in denial um you were like there's no way there's no way that they're actually doing this and vivi was like are they doing this and ronan <laughs> was just looking like i don't know what's happening <laughs> he had his hands up like i don't know what's happening because so, i just refuse to believe it like i refuse to believe that after all these years amc finally committed and yeah, did yep. the thing yep. yeah yeah because i had I, I only my only perceived uh, uh uh perceived notion was that like Okay, that's a reference to the comics, which they, <laughs> from what I've been hearing, that they've been teasing from the get go. And so I was like, oh, right, right, right. But uh, much like y'all, I'm like, wait. And then someone said dream. I was like, wait. Yeah, that was me. I said, yeah. I said, it's got to be a dream because yeah. if there's anything that Walking Dead is like known for doing, especially throughout the main show, mm-hmm. is always. Always giving you something that happens. You th- like, you think this is actually happening, and then. Boom! It's Super Mario. Mario. I mean, literally <laughs> in Rick's last episode, they did that. Like they had an yeah. entire sequence where you're like, "We got the reunion," and then he literally right. looks and he right. realizes, "Wait a second, this isn't yeah. real." So it's like Shane you never, Nolan. you can never yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he's hallucinated several times. Whether it's seeing Lori, whether it's seeing Shane, it's just he's done this on, on numerous occasions. So like, you can't always trust it. You can enjoy the moment for what it is, 
but you never know. Yeah. I mean, now the one time when they, you know, when they pull something like this and you and you come to find out that oh, this actually happened was like Ronan. Since you haven't seen it, I'm just gonna say this. Do it. Say this it. Is like this is way later in in like season five or six, I believe, where uh where Carol is a there was a moment where Carol she just you know fired up an egg timer and puts it on the counter and then everything everything in Alexandria goes to hell and then by the time she you know saved people killed some people and you know uh, solved the problem the timer goes off and I go oh this actually happened <laughs> right Right, like this. this she did. Day. She got this done in fifteen minutes. It's <laughs> a freaking day. This is a freaking day. Pull them cookies out of the oven. Let's go. <laughs> like the equalizer. Like I'm gonna time it. Exactly. Yeah. And and I think the thing about that scene in transition, and keeping forward from the point that he cuts his arm off and he's getting away and he's bleeding out. And he has enough sense to know he's got a cauterized wound, but he's still in terrible pain. So he's cauterized wound, which is freaking savage. Only Rick Grimes would do something crazy like that. Season five. And <laughs> then he gets himself, you know, <laughs> captured after all that. So it's kind of like, I love the fact that even he did that, it was no payoff for it. Like one of the things they do really well with The Walking Dead is they don't just allow you to have it um there's always like you know you sacrifice and it may be for absolutely nothing and one of the things that he said in the episode he's like how did you get this far he's like through sacrifice and sacrifice doesn't always mean victory it doesn't always mean you're going to get exactly what you want like a lot of times like he's seen some terrible things like his own son had to effectively kill his mom like stuff like that like it's for self-preservation like he's seen quite a bit um but it was just like with this, it was like, man, like you cut your own arm off all to get captured all over again, to be made to be in a place that's supposed to be paradise. But for him, he just wants to get away. Transition to him kind of waking up and he realizing and we all realizing as the audience, this ain't a dream. He just freaking cut his arm off and he's in there stuck in this bed. He does not want to be there. He wants to get home. Then they go and put him to the front lines. And they're basically like, yeah, you know, you should have died. You know, we could have killed you for that. But instead, like they, a person chooses to want to believe that he's got something more to offer. And so Rick, in Rick fashion, goes and takes out a lot of that anger on some walkers. And during that time, which is crazy, is people just kept watching because they were getting tired. And he just was drilling them and drilling them and drilling them. And like it got to the point that he kind of just stopped and the guy was like, see, this is why I need you. And I don't know. What did you guys think about that transition scene coming from realization that he absolutely did lose his arm to just seeing him still grinding and putting in that work? That's Rick, man. That's literally his character, um, dude. I mean, I, I don't know. Pray, man. pray much. It's, it's, it's awesome to see him almost be numbness to violence. And how much it drives in one eye. It's almost like, so almost similar to how Wolverine does, where he just gets pissed off. It's like, all right, there's no stopping him. The more, the more you piss him off, the more he's going to sushi you or whatnot. So I like that. Yeah. And it was weird just spotting, like, oh, people are cheering him on to, you know, his anger out on, on all these walkers and him having to learn how, okay, you got to hold step and then choom, choom. So pretty yeah. cool. Uh, so uh, <laughs> best way I could describe it season five, episode nine, No Way Out. When Rick goes ham on all the walkers in Alexandria, that we got yeah. that. <laughs> it was that energy. <laughs> this episode gave me so much season five Rick energy, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, to be honest, a lot of people, that's what they feel about this episode. Like Andrew Lincoln went for it. It's it's almost like he didn't leave. Like he didn't miss a step. Regardless of kind of how you feel about the certain moments they give him or certain interactions with certain characters they give him, he is giving it a thousand percent. It was almost as though like he just tapped right back in like he never left. Which I appreciate it specifically in this scene because he's interacting with other characters he's never interacted with, but yet he's still the Rick that we remember. It's mm -hmm. not just from a written standpoint, it's the execution of how he's handling the character. So that was one of the things I really liked about this, this specific scene. 
Um, so transition from that point, then they go to effectively showing like he's got to get like a prosthetic and it's a black prosthetic with the hand. I was like, oh, he's got his Darth Vader going on. Um, I to, said perfectly in time for Black <laughs> History Month. <laughs> hey, <laughs> right, it was right. That Black Power Fist. <laughs> right, it's exactly. It, it was just a slant a little bit, but it was definitely looking up. But um, <laughs> in I'm Attack on saying. Titan fashion, like he's kind of going through like a recruitment, like he's going and being drilled and going through training. And I think the thing about it is interesting. I, I wanted to get you guys' perspective on it. Like we have seen certain like soldier like like territory people but i think to this level and scope is just very different like it's interesting to watch rick come from what we know him to be with whole pound to be a tacticianer to be like a legit swat soldier um so kind of what did what do you guys take on like this approach to rick and i mean he looks freaking dope but yeah. it's like the thing that i got from him is like i don't even know what he's capable of even more so now because yeah. he's learned some interesting things and he's got some different equipment and he's been conditioned mentally to do different things as well from working with this new character. But what would you guys take on his military progression? So like you said, I um, mean, uh, he looked dope. Uh, obviously we mentioned that, but I mean, later on is when he clearly found the switch and he realized he had to be there. Um, but earlier on when we had like that little progression, even when he was still deciding that he was going to run away and they were like, Hey, are you going to run away? And he's like, of course not. And then he ends up trying to run away. But, um, we have that moment where I don't know why this stood out to me so much, but to see him salute major general Beale, I don't know what it was about that scene, but it, it felt wrong. It felt really wrong. And it's like, um, we know he's going through this whole process and he knows a whole bunch of things. He's seen a lot of shit, but just to see him saluting someone else, it just it didn't feel right. You know what I'm saying? But um, towards the end of the episode where we end up seeing him on the helicopter and all that stuff, we know that there's been a major switch. So um, I don't know. I, I feel like there's gonna they're going to show a lot of that military kind of progression in the next few episodes, I'm hoping. But um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of nervous because I think he's going to even be, if we considered him a badass before, I need to know what he's capable of now. But it's going to be really fun. No, I think that's a really good point because even him saluting, I think he had to save face. Like he knew it's one or two things. Either they like him enough because he's crazy or two, he's on the chopping block. They're trying to find a reason to kill him. And I think that his superior respects him, um, but he also was trying to get information because he absolutely mm -hmm. asked like, you know, is Donald like trying to do something? Is he trying to come at us? And Rick immediately says no. So of course... He kind of had that one moment, and uh, he's like, well, please, General, look at me in my eyes. You tell me what I'm actually doing. I thought that was a really freaking dope line. Um, only Rick could do something like that. But uh, you guys have any other takes for our uh, military standpoint? I would say, I would say this is um... – you got to remember, this is – you got to remember, in the very beginning, we were introduced to Rick as a sheriff from the main show of Walking Dead. Dude was yep. a cop. So – I looked at this and I said, okay, this isn't too far off. This is just basically a universe seven version of what Rick would have been like if he had joined SWAT. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. I like well, it. I'm, he looked dope. Now nah, he was in full Punisher gear, bro. <laughs> right. Right. Like, but, like, but, uh, like, but this, I'm, I'm with you seeing him salute. Yeah. It, it feels, it feel, you know, it definitely fell, it fell off, but you gotta remember this is, this is Rick who knows how to play possum. He does. Dude, he absolutely knows how to. And this is why I tell people watch the main series. Watch the main series to see how Rick progresses from, you know, from season one all the way up to season nine. You see the evolution of Rick. Yeah. No, absolutely. Now, because of his military progression, like there's a key character in this, and that's um, Donald. I think his last name is uh, Akafor. Um, he's played by a, a person named Craig Tate. Mm -hmm. um, I actually liked his character. I initially kind of was like, "Oh Lord!" Like initially, kind of yeah. kind of he enunciated words. I was like, "He's giving me Denzel Washington vibes." A little I thought bit. he was going to be another cliche, uh, you know, like just another <laughs> tough, you know, superior officer. I was a little nervous. But I think that the way that they progressed his character and kind of was like, "I believe in you," like, "Oh, I've done this," and then like secrets after secret starts compounding. And to like him finally getting 
violent towards Rick and being like, this is what I've really sacrificed. This is what I've done. This is what I've done against my own wife and my Mm -hmm. own people. And I thought that like it validated how he's been this whole entire time. Now, whether or not he's freaking crazy and he's wrong, that's up for a debate. I mean, I think that's a subjective opinion, what he's what he's trying to do. But I think that I liked his progression as a character and the way he went out. That was freaking nuts. Man. Like he went out cold. Like the man was like, you know what, Rick? I think this is gonna be great. And you you got to this point, but I really don't know where this is gonna go. And then all of a sudden the man got something sticking out his chest and he just blows. That uh, man so gave that man gave Rick the two days to retirement speech. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that was handled like because like I said, I thought he was just gonna be one of those basic characters that we've seen before you know a tough pain in the ass you know bad guy but then when he started breaking down explaining everything that he had to do and then we had that moment with rick where rick actually apologized and he wasn't apologizing to get out of the situation he was genuinely you know sorry Sorry. for what this man has had to do yeah and um you keep mentioning like how he ended up going out and i just i have so much to say about i don't want to dive too crazy into it but like the fact that michonne resorted to that much violence violence i can't wait to see like why she had to go that crazy like i know when we see her backstory and everything we're gonna see why she felt like she needed to go that crazy and i'm i'm so ready for it i'm so ready for it man i did have a question about uh about about this guy number one shout outs to walking dead again they are going i want to say what four for four five for five of introducing these awesome black characters in their show (laughs) now granted he's no mercer okay he's no mercer from season 11 but He's he's pretty badass because remember, Sam, we watched Dead City, black dude that was the bounty hunter, right? Like, thank you, <laughs> thank yeah, you, AMC, no. thank you for introducing like more cool black characters like this. What I want to know is since he intercepted uh Rick's letters and, and pictures and all that stuff, that we saw him, cl- we saw Rick clearly throw on the boat. What did Michonne find then when you go back to season 10? You see her. You know, she actually found his boots and the phone with the with the sketch of uh, of herself. And uh, I believe it was Judith. Like, how did like how did he like, like how did he miss that? So he had a separate he had a separate one. I think that was the yeah. first one he did. That it looks like he has multiple. One ones. Okay. And he had like um, a, a specific um, insignia on it. I can't remember what language it was. I believe it was I think it was Japanese. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, the thing that I conf- that confused me a little bit too at first because we do know that when he was saying that oh this is what I found, he was referring to that specific scene that we saw in The Walking Dead and we do know the the, the stuff that Michonne found was from that specific scene cuz yeah. he threw the stuff on that boat and that's the boat that she ended up finding. Yeah. So we do know that that, you know, um there is kind of like a relevance there connection but, yeah 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 but i am really excited for more oh I'll, I'll say this to that actor what a what a what a script you got what a role you got to do as a as a one-off maybe he might be in a flashback who knows but i'm like if you get to do this for for one episode and just out of the park that is that is awesome i, mm-hmm. I apply that because yeah it, it, the whole time it felt almost like i'm not trying to compare it but the vibe i got was when it was Bale and and Heath as as Batman and Joker right, right. Punching him. Yep. like you can't do anything that I don't know or don't want already right now. and then he then he comboed it like okay this whole time I've been letting you let your anger out but trying to point to you I know who you are I know what you're, what you're after and forget about it or not and then once he started hitting him with stuff he's like okay let me give you a history lesson right now thirty <laughs> seconds I've been in your spot don't go don't go as far as as you been the way i've been so i'm trying to help you get out of your sanity faster than it took me probably no that's absolutely i think that's right on key and the fact that you don't even have a point of reference is actually really good running um so there's another character they did introduce her name is thorn in this episode (laughs) um they introduced her because she's throwing a bottle at rick she's like man uh, well thanks he's like thank you for what he's like yeah I'm not going to try that anymore. Like, I'm not going to (laughs) say, I'm never going to get out of here. And they have this hate frenemy relationship going on because essentially she divulged that she's been trying to escape just like he has. He's tried to escape like four times. 
she kind of has done that in the back end, but she's got like a death wish as well. And she's looking at this very differently, but because um, Donald is trying to recruit both of them, they're having to kind of work together. And she's a stronger soldier. I think she was like Navy SEAL, special ops as well. Yeah, she was. Um, yes. And she was like, I don't miss. And we found that out the last time that Rick tried to escape and he had it perfect. Like he, he had it to a dime. He had his yeah. dog test. He had the body. Like all he, only thing that messed him up, the only thing that messed him up was a little girl. Yeah. And you know, Rick, he's, he's going to try to save people and he could have dipped, but he didn't. He chose to held on to his humanity, which goes back to what Donald said. You chose this. You could have went, you could have gone, but he, he didn't. Um, but as, during, as soon as that happened and he started trying to save the girl, she took out all of them. Like you just keep hearing like little whispers of yes. silence going on. Um, but I think the thing about it initially with her execution of acting, I just was a little indifferent at times. But I think her last scene with him was done so well. Yeah. Um, she poured a lot into that, and I think it it rounded out her character as a whole. I'm curious to see the gap in time from the moment that they had that talk to present day, if they're in a relationship. If I, I don't really know what the consequences that, yeah. of their friendship to relationship is, because he effectively let go of everything. Like he he let it all go. But what did you guys think about her character? I was worried initially that it was going to be a love triangle that eventually Michonne will get to him. And right now he's currently banging her or, you know, they're sleeping together, whatever. And it's just like, awkward. And it's just like, uh, like love triangles. Right. I, you know, they need to be spaced out. So pop yeah. culture in general, yeah. you need to space the love triangles out. Cause I've had enough. I haven't had to deal with Wolverine and Cyclops and Jean Grey for years now. You need to space that out. But I love that she was on her own path and yet, you know, listen, dude, don't fuck it up. Like, and she's a great actress too. She killed it in Lucifer. So, I mean, when I heard Lucifer that nice. she was going to be in this, I was like, you know what? I think this is going to be fun. Good but I didn't her. even, I didn't even think about that. But at the same time, you're you're talking about him kind of severing his connections, and part of me was thinking that, yeah, we ended the episode the way we ended. But if we start off the next episode, I think part of me believes that Rick might try to push her away and Michelle and be like, because if they find out, then you're gonna you're gone, you know, like they're going to follow me. They're going to kill you all. So I got to go back to where I'm at and kind of like forget about you. And, and I think that, you know, whatever he has going on back there, <laughs> I mean, is just, I don't know. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. Bro, she looks like she's about to get hit with a stray bullet for real. I don't, I don't think she's making it. You know what I'm saying? No way. No chance. <laughs> no, yeah, I think, I think no. she might end up chance you might go out okay. like a champ because i mean the fact that she mentioned oh you're doing what i'm doing like it has to do with love so i feel like she might end up sacrificing herself so he can have a happy ending you know what i'm saying and same thing with that guy that we out we instantly all fell in love with i thought like we all said oh this dude's gone this dude's gone and the fact <laughs> that he's this episode yeah is insane to me but i mean like i'm so nervous for this poor dude i only but, drew that conclusion uh, just based off of um like how the other spinoff shows go because the the other Walking Dead spinoffs they always introduce that one character that you like like but they usually get rid of them that episode. See, yeah, true. but see, not now that true. while that is true, uh, uh, Sam, remember when we saw Dead City? There was that one character they lasted all the way to like what episode four? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, all I know is they got some Walking Dead fan to play this actor, and he just was himself. <laughs> like, yeah. he, he was like, look, I'm here, bro. <laughs> like, I'm going to talk to Rick like he's my homie. Like, yo, Rick, you really did that, though? Really? And, and I think that that may take some people out. Like, I, I was fine no. with it because you're going to have certain people that, you know, are dealing with and processing all of this completely differently. And he's, yeah, a part he's of been the, there long enough to be like, yo, I, I gotta be at the final even, no. life. Even his, his way he said, like, yeah. oh, you really like it like that, man. And I was like, oh, God. a part of me was like, oh, here comes the, the, the Latino man, be like, really crazy, man, you know? <laughs> a part of me is like, Luis from Ant Man. And I just what like, the, okay, here a we part go. Of me, like, is, a, a part of me low key thought that he was supposed to be like, I guess. I guess like a character's interpretation of the audience because what well, exactly think, think about it. The very first thing he said to Rick when, when we see him on screen is you really did that, huh? You really did that though. You really, <laughs> like, did that, though. You're like, you really <laughs> cut your arm off. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, as the audience, we're like, he really did that. 
And the yeah. thing is, you know what it and I'm I'm fine with it. I'm completely fine with it. What it reminded me of like I mean I mentioned this to you uh, uh Sam when we watched Halo. It's like when we get the more human moments out of these characters when some of the like this is so real for them. So half the time it's so brutal. So when we get characters that are being human and being so real and being like us it just makes it so yeah. <laughs> it makes it it makes it great, man. Like I mean, look at this dude. How can you not like him? <laughs> I mean, Listen, no, look, kudos look. to him. He's on this show. He's in that episode. A lot of people aren't don't have that. Oh Jesus! <laughs> Hell yeah! People don't have that privilege. So hey, man, kudos. Hey, that, that man was a Walking Dead fan from jump, bro. Like he, he was like, "What do I got to do with you?" <laughs> no, it's just those things that like like the way he was reacting was just so real. I mean, like. Like, the way he was talking to Rick, he's like, if I was to tell you something, I wouldn't tell you this. And it's right. just the stuff that, like, I feel like, like, it's just how I feel. You know what I'm saying? So, like Darrell, you said, I, an audience perspective. Darrell, I want to see if, if we bring in someone who, like, like Sam's perceived as a Walking Dead fan. What do we have someone who, like you who was, like, critiquing what Rick would be doing or be saying? Like, what? You said what, yeah. Sam? Man, that's <laughs> stupid. What is wrong with you, man? Are you fucking, have you been, do you need to see a therapist or something? I'd be... Funny as hell, and we had the alternative version of just like the vibe and energy. <laughs> oh, like That's a character. Funny. Yeah, to be like, you said what? You did not, dude. What? What the fuck is wrong with oh, you? Oh yeah, and be like, man, like no, you would never say that like that. Like no, this doesn't make sense. Like <laughs> this is terribly paced. Like what? Are you, what are you doing? Like no, it took this long to do that. This. Yeah. Like wh why? Why would we wait for this moment for this to happen? Critiquing like, the no. last step seasons of yeah. Walking Dead. <laughs> I, I I am like seriously like trying to restrain myself because there's so many things that i want to say it's just like i i, I don't even, it's it's almost like if you can imagine just <laughs> this is what rick is like, going through right now look yeah, at, it's like he's mad at me, rick, mad rick, at me. Is, rick is legit <clears throat> looking at you through these eyes it's like what, anyway. watching some some trolley go by and it's just like on fire and um it just crashes into a river that's what the episode felt like so what, what do you want me to do with this? Where do you want me? Where do you want me to begin? Shit. No, I mean, I've been going through the episode. I've been going through section for section. I mean, I know, I know, I know. Um, so, but I'm gonna continue. I'll keep going. Yeah, on. yeah, let's, I'm, yeah. I'm, let's, 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 yeah, let's keep um, moving. So from that point, you know, like the moment that Rick decided to go out and try to break free one last time, and then gets caught. He goes immediately and goes to Donald and confronts him, holds him down, and it's like, mm -hmm. "What do you know?" And my man Donald basically was like, "Yo, I know everything. I got, I got, I got all your dirty laundry. I got everything. I got all the cards. And you think I couldn't have killed? I could have killed you a thousand times, bro. Like, and I'm not afraid of you in any one shape or form. And I, I thought that that whole interaction was freaking dope because I think the thing about it." is that Andrew brought a lot of energy into that scene. Like, I think that was the first time, like he's been desperate, but this is the first time that we he's felt threatened. You know what I mean? Like it's a difference in like going for survival and it's another thing going and feeling like you're being threatened and somebody's trying to take away something that you know for a fact you have a full right to. He said it, he's like, I've gone through so much. No one's going to tell me what I cannot do at this point. Or what I can't go back to. Like you can't, you can't tame me in this. But the crazy thing about it from a transition standpoint, he did. Like Rick effectively was like, he gave up. Like he was like, at a certain point, like he was like, I'm gonna die. Like he said it to his friend. He was like, either I'm getting out or I'm gonna die. And he was getting ready to kill himself. And he thought about it. He's like, all this would have been for absolutely nothing. But I can't escape. So what do I do? What did you guys think about like Rick's decision to not well not only not kill himself, but he kind of technically did. He technically was like, Yeah, I did die. Like I, I gave up on the idea of what I was effectively. What did you guys think about that? Bold move, Grimes. Bold move. Character development. But here's the thing: I could see people saying this should have happened in, in episode two. Instead of in the first episode, I can see people being like, like, tug it in for, you know, if this is dropped on a weekly, week to week basis, I would say chug it in for two weeks until he, he can't hold it anymore. It doesn't see the point to it. So I think, yeah, you said it's bold move, Cotton, but like, it's, it's, I don't know. Part of me feels like people are going to think like this should happen 
a little bit longer. See, the thing is, I don't mind it happening in this episode, but what you're saying, it doesn't make sense, because I really, I truly want to believe this this uh, show doesn't have pacing issues, and, you know, with the story they want to tell, and there only being six episodes, and the fact that we already skipped, you know, we, we did some time jumps, you know, throughout this episode, I understand that that was necessary, but I really, and, and they handled it in this episode well, it wasn't a problem. But I really hope that it's not a problem in the upcoming episodes. And like you said, like maybe they should have held off until episode two. But I truly want to have faith that they're going to, you know, land on both feet and make it work. Yeah, I think the thing that people are going to critique and I'm not going to say critique. People are going to try to make sense of how much time has has gone by, (laughs) like through just this episode alone. I didn't have any problem with it because the truth of the matter is I ain't seen anything past season 10. So I don't have a care about placement of time. It's more so like I've been waiting for this ninja to come back for a long period of time. So now he's here. But I can imagine some people being like, oh, man, how much gap of time has actually happened? What has happened in between those things? And so people may question that. But I think that there's enough progression and entertainment. And like you said, there is character development. Like it's not just being stagnant. They're actually moving somewhere regardless of people's understanding. And the other thing about this is these are only six episodes. These were supposed to be mini movies. It's just a mini series. So they're not, they're not going to hold back for anything. Matter of fact, they're going to be pushing on the gas. <laughs> um, so for better or for worse, it's going to, it's going to be a ride either way. But um, I, I really didn't have too much issue with it. I, I just like the fact that, they went a route that I never thought that I would see Rick Grimes go down of technically really effectively giving up. Or I don't even say giving in, but like he 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 was like, I'm burning everything. And it's interesting because even in his mind, he started doing it because each time he's had these amazing dreams and flashbacks of her, the idea of her, like his dreams of her effectively went and burned away after he burned the phones, the letters, and everything. Bro. And I was just like, dang, Rick. Bro, I uh, I was I was not buying that. I was so not buying that. I was like, Rick would never. He was like, when he threw all that shit in the fire, he would never. Come on. Rick Grimes. Wait, why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? I just, I didn't buy their execution of how they did it, I suppose. Wait, how, Wait, just, how it was it? It wasn't convincing how he got up to that point, in my opinion. Wait, do you think he would never have gotten to that point? Is what you're saying? I mean, yeah, those, those two different things. Like the statement. No, of, no, no, no. So, like it, burning this shit. Yeah. Like, like I'm just gonna let it go. I'm just gonna soldier <laughs> through this. Like, no. I mean, nah, wait, wait, the cauterize. I, I don't think so. Are you talking about when he? No, no, thing? no, no. Not his hand, but just like this. Um, the letter. Burning throwing, the letters, burning the phone, like oh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, like throwing like, it truly, away, walk away. I didn't, I didn't buy it. it. You know what? I no, I, it. I get that. I did feel I like I, I did feel like there was. It kind of felt like they um, ultimately we were trying to get to that goal, but they kind of pushed it a little bit. Like they kind of went a little fast paced into that yeah. point, and I feel like they yeah. should have showed a little more. But I think that yeah. that that conversation between him and and Okafer, was a big, you know, a really, really big moment for him. I feel like they could have shown it being even an even bigger moment for him. So we understood why he did all those things. But I do understand what he means because there was parts of me that was like, okay, he kind of is switching up fast. But at the end of the day, with the way they explained it, with him trying to escape like five times, like he escaped four times and then tried for a fifth. So it's like it's really clear that, you know, he's been doing this before. And obviously they show that little clip at the end of The Walking Dead where he tried to do it before. But I feel like, you know, showing a little more of him breaking apart would have been a little necessary. It would have sucked to see a fan, but I understand what you're going for. Yeah, yeah. The reason why I Um, I debate that is because he was trying to kill himself. Yeah. He he wasn't going to escape anymore. Like it, it effectively he was like, look, bro. Was he trying to do that I, after I he had, went to burn the stuff? Yeah, that was okay. No, then no, no, that no, makes no, sense. Yeah, after he burned, up. No, it was okay. after he. It was after, after he, he got burned into the argument. Okay. No, after he burned the stuff and he was back in his room, that's when he thought of the idea of ending everything. Like he was okay. going to die right there in his room. But I look at it like this: 
you know, as uh, as Heath Ledger once said, it's all part of the plan. <laughs> I do believe that. I do believe that Rick <laughs> has a plan. Wait. I'm, I'm shut up. The long run? Okay, never mind. This never is mind. a long run. <laughs> so, 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 okay. So, this is. This Come is on. Insane. How many times? No, How hold many, on. I'm, no, I'm, no, 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 no. No, wait, think about this. Wait, wait, this man wait. played the longest long wait. game when it came to. <laughs> but why would he burn? No, but why would he burn? Wait, wait. So, okay, wait, 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 wait hold on. Let me Let me get it out. Let me get it out. They know too much. This man played the longest long game when it came to dealing with Negan. He went to burn all of it. Though. So think think about this. Sometimes you gotta Jarell. get dirty. Jarell. You gotta do what no, you gotta do, fam. Hold on, hold on, Jarrell. This Who's man. Who's he didn't have copies, backups, no, 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 something, it's, it's, a it's manifest? More, it's more simple than that. It probably is. Yeah. Aqua Four basically. He he basically said, "I know where all your stuff is. At Boom. any moment, I can oust you." Boom. <laughs> Leverage, <laughs> like effectively. Leverage, like well, all they got to do one good time is sweep his whole entire. Matter of fact, if any time, if Donald was like, "Yeah," because he said it, he he. The moment he had Rick pinned down, he was like, "Before Rick, he apologized." I don't think he was apologizing to beg for his life. He was really being legitimate, but he, basically, the guy was like, "I've tried, Rick. Like I've I've tried, I've tried." And all he has to do, he only have to kill Rick. He can just go in there and say, "Like, look, man." Like I'm, I gotta take all your stuff. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm outing you. I, I, because if you choose to continue to fight this, I will go and find them out and kill them. Exactly. That's that's it. Like and and, and to me, I kind of felt the same exact way. I was like, oh man, no, Rick, no, Rick. I think it was a two hand fold. I think that he knew for a fact one that's leverage that they can use at any given time because he had that there, and the guy already knew he had it. He already knew that it was in his bag in his room. Mm-hmm. But then the other side of that is if he really is trying to turn this side off. And I think the thing about it, once you decide that you're breaking a connection like that on that level after committing suicide, like there's no levels to what a person is going to do once they're broken like that. Mm-hmm. Like there is it's almost like you're effectively cutting off a part of you so you can be able to choose to move forward. Again, yeah, like, and it's not like he was again, it's not like he was writing a, a like a, a spoiler free letter. He was like expressing everything he felt. So there was probably stuff in there that could expose them, and he just probably felt as though it wasn't worth keeping around. Especially if he's gonna put them in the Yeah, not burn it and left it in a box. Especially it, if it he would, died. Yeah, they would have it would it. it would have played like a novella that if by the time he left it in the box and was like a commit yep. to, to the to the, the group and Michonne finds that box. She's gonna start breaking down tears, be like, "You gave up on me. I didn't give up on you. Look at this. It's in the writing and whatnot." So, part of me is like, "Okay, thank God they avoided that cliche." But I, you know what? To, to an extent, I can I can see Jarrell's side of it just because, again, like I said, people might be like, "This should have taken place a little bit longer." Even though, yes, they did tell us that time has passed. Um, I was shocked that they did it, and but then again, yeah. I also like we like to reiterate that I'm not as connected to it as busy and tsunami are or as sam and Jarrell were once so it's interesting <laughs> interesting, interesting. was one keyword once. <laughs> once. <laughs> once. <laughs> um but yeah from that point it looks like another gap of time happened because now we're in present day he's having a conversation with donald and basically donald's like uh, you're the perfect man for this mission you're the perfect person for this position and like everything is led into place and then it leads to like rick going and talking about a time with his father and i think this is the first time in any walking dead episode i, I mean y'all y'all keep me honest that rick has talked about his parents or his mom or his dad has he I, ever talked I about feel his like dad we've had he's them talk only, about him but i don't I'm, remember i'm not sure not, no. and not in this the detail. one time the one uh the only time he's ever mentioned anything about any of his family members was his grandfather and that's when he name dropped the title of the show during season five mm-hmm. now as far as his parents goes this is probably the first time the first time he he might have mentioned something in passing when he was talking you know to carl or somebody on the show but this is the first time he's ever gone into like super detail where we find out number one rick was a farm boy growing up mm-hmm. who became a cop Right. And which is weird because I'm pretty sure they show that he knew nothing about farming. Right. When he was at, that, at the prison and stuff like that. They made it seem like he was just a newbie. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah same he, thing with Herschel's seems, farm. Yeah. Yeah. Like they rewrote history a little bit. And yeah. and I still say that. Well, Rick, we still waiting. Uh, well, at least for me, because I read. You know, I read the. I read all the books. I have to say, um, hey, Rick, when are you going to talk about your brother? The no, same. Not Just saying, that. are you going to even mention your brother? <laughs> well, it probably doesn't happen. Not Daryl. <laughs> Not Daryl. <laughs> his his real brother. His actual brother. Yeah, he, Rick does have a real brother. Anywho, uh, in, in <laughs> Sam didn't read. <laughs> in that one didn't read. <laughs> it, it didn't. It, but it, it's been long enough that it's clear that he doesn't. His brother does not exist here. Yeah, pro- probably. But hey. First time he mentioned his father so and his mother. So I know, but it would be absolute cheeks if they it your... would. It oh, would. look, it's you after eleven seasons. You're finally here. I, well, no, see, I'm not. I'm not asking for the character to actually show. Oh, you up. want a reference? Okay, just a reference. A reference just mentioned. to say, you know, okay, that's not... fair. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. God, I mean, no, just... I'm not asking for another character to appear <laughs> in this. I need more Rick and Michonne. <laughs> yeah, I just. Oh, my God. For for me, I just appreciated the fact that them actually going into a backstory that connected to him outside of Michonne, outside of Carl, outside of Lori, and like effectively talking about like his dad, like he coming down the stairs, seeing that the crops are burning, seeing his dad on fire, and his dad having enough strength to say it's all good, don't worry about it, don't be afraid, and we'll recover, and they can end up get their house replaced, get the crops, everything worked itself out. And then after the dad passed, the mother finally divulged to him, like, no, your dad actually said all that. Bro, that scene, actually, that scene was actually pretty dope. I'm not going to lie. Because, like, for once, it felt like everything sort of aligned just right. And uh, Andrew, Andrew felt like he was really in the moment, you know, or in the groove, so to speak. And, like, while this villainous ass dude is, like, genuinely listening <laughs> which was also in, uh, interesting um yeah that was actually a nice sequence ironically yeah. even though i still contend that this episode is really bad for a whole list literal list of reasons that i made but uh no i did like that though that that was dope i won't lie to you that right there <laughs> sam that right there was the reason why i said long game because think about it if you really pay attention to how he told that story Oh yeah, no, no. It, I, it, yeah, it makes I you think. I know, I know, I know. Because it, it could have been taken two different ways. It could have been taken to say to him, like, "Oh no, like I finally accept like your sacrifice, and we have to go and burn and do this in order to preserve more." And but yes, it 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 feels like there's two things being implied at the same as that time. I completely agree. Now I thought, I, I thought he was just sort of. Um, just from being pent up, just sort of like uh, I don't know, like emotionally purging. I thought he was being honest. I thought no, I, I didn't. I, do think, I didn't. I, I think I didn't he's being yeah, I didn't. I didn't think he was trying to be like deceptive or anything. I think he was being genuine. Oh no, he was definitely being honest by playing the long game. Yeah, he was I, just honest about his long game. That's all. I, I mean, he just he basically said to him after saying all that, I'm in. After all this time, like I'm officially in, I've oh, waited. Yeah, sure. Um, but there's something that Jarrell said, like this feeling, this guy. Do you guys look at Donald as a villain? Not at all. Because I don't. Um, Not at all. Not even close. I'm curious y'all perspective on him. I mean, I mean, I feel like they were definitely about to play him. Like I feel like it's complicated. I feel like if mm, we were mm-mm. watching him during all of these events, like say if we saw him. Like like during the bombing of Atlanta of of Los Angeles, if we saw him actually right. doing this when right. it all went down, I feel like we would look at it at, at a different point of view. But we've experienced and we've been through all this crap, seeing what these characters have had to do, so we know that like some of these characters, none of these characters are innocent. Like none Not of them. At all. Are. Yeah. So it's yeah, like it's hard to true. really call someone a villain. Yeah, that's true. Because I mean, everyone has done some crazy shit to survive. So yeah, it's I like think- um. How they go but based, about it, based off the it. writing, though. Based off the writing, I mean, come on, come on. Now. I mean, the fact that he's like, Oh, yeah, I'm responsible for 4,000 people dying. Yeah, you're gonna look at him and be like, Yeah, maybe, maybe villain. Sure. But then he's like, But I saved yeah. 100,000 people. But that's just one of those things where it's like every villain's kind of a hero of their own story. So yeah. it really comes down yeah. to what you guys perceive as who's a villain, who's a hero. 
Right. Sure. If, yeah, if you're if you're black and white about it, yeah. But obviously, there's a gray area. The hey, reason look, why we had this same conversation about the last of us, me and Drell, last episode of Life. Oh, like, wow. It was Joel oh, the villain that, of that that's, that's a very the, the Joel and, Miller <laughs> paradox is don't even open that. Don't even open that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> don't lie. Nope. Wait, I, I, was, I was gonna say you another character, but I'm not. I'm not. Look, hey, now look, he, how they no, go no, about no. it though, that's that's where it's different. Look, just saying. Look. I'm, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut on that because no one is <laughs> into the subject. Um, but we could talk for days for that. But okay, I was curious y'all perspective and and Eris, you said what did your take on that with him? No, I, no, that's a straight up. He's he's not a villain. <clears throat> he's just another. I would say morally gray, but not even that. Like he's just a dude who knows what he had to do, and he's been trying to pass on, um, you know what needs to be done for the sake of changing the CRM for what mm-hmm. it is now. And he knows that Rick is that key to changing it. Yeah. And, and, you know, he's basically trying to get Rick to where he is much faster than the time it took him to get there himself. Mm-hmm. And I want to uh, talk about that. Cause part of me was like, okay, is he trying to get Rick and, and, uh, I forgot her name, the other character, to, like, join him for, like... Oh, Thorn? Yeah, yeah, so he could be in charge. But then part of me, you know, you got to realize that the CRM is extremely corrupt. Like, I don't know how many of you have seen... I know know you've seen A World Beyond, but a lot of... I don't know if you got... I know you didn't get the reference, Ronin, when they were referring to Omaha, and and you were trying to figure out who did it. The CRM is responsible for Omaha. In The World Ah. Beyond, they reveal... That that they were the ones who wiped out Omaha, and when they were talking about how the CRM is going up against the CRM, the group, the, the few that survived that whole entire thing, they're the ones who are, you know. So the fact that you know they even brought that up during the show, part of me is like, are they gonna make an appearance? But the part of me is like, I hope they don't make an appearance. So it's like we'll we'll, we'll see. But I just wanted to make sure you kind of understood okay. how kind of. Tr- crazy this whole situation was and why it kind of makes sense why he was like yeah i want to make a change to the crm like how he realized how important it was even before that terrible event ended up happening the world so it's beyond like, centers around which characters it's it, it they're it's just highlighting really the, the yeah. group that took it's the crm so it's just highlighting the group that took uh, uh rick you know that's just how we were kind of uh endorsed it at the like how we were right. marketed it at the time but it's all about like you know that group from Omaha, a couple of kids. Yeah, so, Rick doesn't Rick doesn't show up, but a character from the main show does make an appearance, in which we know is going to make an appearance in this show. Yep, as we saw from the trailers. Okay. So, really quick question, and it's a deep cut. I don't I don't know the answer to this question, so I'm going to ask you guys. Mm-hmm. As far as the CRM in this scene right here, is this their helicopter? So at the time, no, no. This was at not the time it wasn't. And I think even now, I don't think it's supposed to be. I think this is just like a, you know, the 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 last defense that Atlanta had to trying to protect it. Because now we're finding out that one of the characters from the CRM is responsible for bombing it. So we don't know if that means the CRM did bomb it. We just know that he, you know, was part of a group that did. So, and, so the reason um, why I asked that is because remember the- we saw the helicopter in the air before Rick turned the corner at the end of the first episode now like, that helicopter was, the one that the one that, uh, that rick saw in the city that he was trying to chase before getting ambushed by a bunch of walkers that could have been the crm back yeah. then it could have been the crm but then we also see in season three there was a there was an actual um military chopper uh that that was flying around looking for survivors and they weren't a part of crm they were just they were just some guys that were you know soldiers that were held up in a nearby base in Atlanta. Mm. So, but then there was a point I think in season eight or seven where we did end up seeing an official CRM helicopter. I yeah, think it had and, the three rings and everything, yeah, and that was before season nine when they officially took him. Correct. That at that point we did, and and again in World Beyond you see you see a whole lot more of the CRM. In fact, mm-hmm. you even see you even see glimpses of the CRM in Fear of the Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Like they really? have made their, My they, God, yeah. never. like what? the C- cool. the CRM has appeared in almost. I mean, you might like they've appeared like the CRM has appeared in almost every Walking Dead show. Almost. Yeah, you might, yeah, you might like I mean, it. The uh, yeah. yeah, you might like it, Ronan, because it's really kind of has. I don't want to say it has the Last of Us vibe, but it's about this, you know, 
it, it shows the civilians being kind of stuck in that, you know, city being protected by a very, you know, strict government. So Never. it's like, yeah, so it's like, that's what it, you know, starts as, you know, you see these characters kind of figuring out what, you know, ah. this group is actually about. And this is who Rick is essentially working for. He's working for that group now because they see something in him. So it's like all these little connections finally coming together is something that a lot of us fans have been waiting for because I hate to say it, but some of these spinoffs have been kind of, they've been shit, you know, and uh, some of the seasons, some of the episodes, they weren't it, you know, I, but at the end of the day, I'm glad I watched it because if it does come together and does make sense, I'm truly glad I stuck through it. So again, I, again, I, I folks. I primarily watched it just for, just, you know, just for information gathering. Exactly. That's why, yeah, that's why I finished it. Folks who are watching this, again, this is the, the energy and vibe I was talking about how I'm witnessing because the way these two <laughs> fools are, are freaking the fuck out over these references, like, oh, that's deep cut, is the way you would see how I or Sam were, were reacting when there was last of us. This last mm -hmm. future reference, not just references in, in like for cool game stuff, but just future stuff. I'm like, whoa, that is hearkening to something big. Yeah. Yeah. No. Nah. So, um, the end of this, like after they had that conversation on the helicopter, all of a sudden, my man Donald got sh he got shot. <laughs> he he has his steam coming out of his chest and blood blushing everywhere. And, and that looked like a stick of dynamite. Like, did that she like take an arrow like and throw like, yeah. like in order for it to get that velocity to go through the windshield and go into his chest? I think it was attached <laughs> to an arrow. It was because when I saw it, I said, "Son, who?" I was like, "Son, we got Hawkeye." Shut off your camera, dead. Sam. <laughs> I was like, "We got Hawkeye and Walking Dead over here." I was like, "Son, death shot taking out yeah, everybody." Bro, I'm telling you. No, and that part was great. That part was great. Actually, yeah, just blood and, everywhere. Just freak out moment right and, there. And, and we know got, she. We know she's not alone. I don't know if she's not alone during the sequence, but I'm really curious to see, like, like what she's been through. During her yeah. search, because we don't know anything. We know she left in uh, uh, season ten, and then in season eleven, we knew that she continued to with the group she ended up finding at the end of season ten. So we know that she stuck with that group, and uh, King Bach, or, or you know, is gonna end up making his debut because we know we saw him in the trailer. We know we saw him at in the end of season ten. What? So I'm excited. To see what? How that looks like. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god! I can only. Imagine who it is, but I'm not gonna say it. I want to see it and see what these folks freak out for. Again, the juice, mm, folks. It, she got real folks. Anyway, man, finishing dog. the scene out, my man's exploded, and I give it to Andrew Lincoln. He had like an actual emotional reaction because he was like, "We're oh going my. down," <laughs> like, and I was like, saying, "This is it." it. He was like, hey, 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 hey. And, and the crazy thing is, like, he was like, prepare for impact. They hit. And as soon as he realized he wasn't dead, where he put his little clip on, put his helmet on, it's like, let's go. Bro, the military logo, the out, vibes, bro. Like, he rolled out like, I don't care what's out there. We're going to end them. And it's crazy because it's like his other soldiers around him were just getting blown up. He's still sitting there moving. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we know that a certain person with a katana is like icing these cats, and we are like, is it? Is it? Is it her? Is okay, it her? listen, it listen. Her? Can I say something? Can I say something? Go for okay, it, so listen, uh, okay. listen, listen. I, I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. I thought I thought this episode was close to like liquid shit, but that last scene though, and then fades to the end credits. What's fantastic for real? What do you consider for real? Good? For real. <laughs> I'm, I'm, telling, I'm telling. I'm telling. I'm telling you right now. This moment where what wasn't it? What's wasn't, wasn't it like yellow or something like that? But it was like uh, she, she looked like she was in some kind of samurai mm -hmm. fucking suit or something. It was dope yeah. as hell. Yeah, they showed but, that um, end of uh, the show. Yeah. Okay. No, but but no, that that moment genuinely. Um, I thought it was good for real, for real. That literally could have, even though we're talking about like mere seconds here, literally. But this would could have passed for like a moment, like a highlight reel from like the the main series, for sure. Listen, just seeing the tip, I only saw the tip of the, of the katana from the corner of the frame. I was like, oh shit, I think I know who that is. <laughs> and these people are like, no, 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 not this early, not this early. And then 
And, and can I? Was that a oneer? Did they do a oneer for just a few seconds to, to pull out from when they got out of the helicopter to? Oh, it might have okay. been. Yeah, I didn't even yeah. notice that. I was so like attached. I was yeah. like, damn, yeah. bro, wow. Could be wrong, but I was just like, that was cool. And yeah, man. I wanted to yeah. know. Uh, <laughs> I was like, son, who who's over here launching mortars at a chopper? <laughs> <laughs> And like, honestly, it could have been anybody considering up. how brutal they Baba were. Yeah. <laughs> that, no, right? <laughs> anyway. Um, it was just so, good. That, that, it, that's, that's how you do an ending. That is definitely how you do an ending. So, yeah, at the end of it, like, you know, of course, they're attacking each other. She gets ready for the kill. She always lifts up the match right before the kill. She sees him. He sees her. He's in shock. She's in tears. And then episode fades to black. And that is the complete rundown of the episode, um, which it was freaking insane. Um, <laughs> Sam, do you think it was a good episode? Yeah, I thought it was a great episode. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I don't have any issues with this episode. <laughs> I, like, I, I, don't, I, I don't have no, any I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure I'm the only person who disliked it. I don't, sure. I don't have any. I, I'm I'm not like the. Though. I haven't liked The Walking Dead in a very freaking long time. And it took a lot for me to go back and even go through and finish season 10. Um, but yeah, this episode was worth it. Like, this is, this is fire. Like, I don't have any reason to hate on this episode at all. I mean, the only thing I can maybe critique as be should. like, you know, the dude, the Latino <laughs> dude that was his friend, he kind of feels like a fan just dumped into the episode because <laughs> tonally he's just not on sync with everything that's going on in this. Um, but their budget, their execution, not just that, like when did the walking dead start using profanity? Like uh, know, they started again? picking up towards the last like season or two uh, of the say, um, all of, of season the 11, so, you know, the season again, that you again, refused to watch. I, again, season 11. Here, 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 here. <laughs> Hear me again. I personally have not seen it, and so for me to kind of get him to be like unleashed, Rick, like this was this is this is dope for me, man. I've I've waited for the progression of a character. We never really got to see that with Rick. That's the thing. Like like because I don't know if it had to do with the streaming services or once they started allowing it on streaming services. You know when they—that's when they started allowing them to kind of be free with the language. But uh, that's when it started picking up because even in the spinoffs, it's a little more vocal with uh, uh you know dialogue. Yeah, here. Way, they have way more, more freedom. Way more vocal in the spinoff. AMC was like, man, look, we can't let HBO beat this. <laughs> <laughs> Go free. Uh, <laughs> Do it. The last it's season. Easy. AMC was like, hey, look, we let him, we we let it fly in in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Why don't we let it do it in our zombie show? True. True. Yeah, I think they were so mainstream at the time. Yeah, like they they just they didn't want to piss anyone off. And I, I mean, love it or hate it, The Walking Dead was so damn popular; it's like insane. Exactly. So I well, think they just wanted to market it to everyone. But yeah, at the end of the day, the, the amount of gore that's in dude. it, you think that that makes no sense, you know? Yeah. I used yeah. to love The Walking Dead so hard. That's hard to believe. <laughs> Very so hard. hard to believe. Boy, it's just been like eleven seasons. How's it been ha- hard to believe? The hell? Durrell, you know how long that is? Durrell, eleven you... no. seasons. Durrell, given the fact oh. that you were surprised when I said season eleven, when did you stop watching the show? No, he he actually went back and finished. No, it. no, I I I went as soon as they announced that a series finale mm-hmm. was confirmed. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, well, let my old ass try again. You know, what he, I mean? he, he, <laughs> no, he 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 hate, hate watched it. No, no, he no, hate no. watched that last. I, I know he did, but I want to know when, like, what season? Oh, where did I li- where, where did, did I leave fall off? off the wagon? Where did you fall off the wagon? I, I don't know. I, I think I think it was like very early season eleven, like early super in season early. eleven. Okay, I get yeah. You. There were. Yeah. I, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna lie. Like I'm not gonna lie to you. Season eleven definitely had like there was some pacing that definitely was called on the question. I there were a lot of decisions that they that they made where I said this was an oh, awesome yeah. idea. You had this back in season one. You this bring it Rick back here. <laughs> I'm like, why? Why would you do that? Like why? Why would yeah, you well, wait and bring it back to, to, to this season? Where was this in the last eight seasons? You know what I'm saying? It's stuff, see, stuff there, like that. So I can understand. Dog, there's like, what am I echoing? Yeah, you, you got to echo. Yeah, you just need your headphones on. I think. 
Maybe. Now you're good to talk. It's just when we're talking, you know. Yeah, it's like you talk, it's fine. Oh, okay. But uh, that's fine. But that's a whole. But but this could be a whole hour of me going in on on season eleven and why you should watch it and appreciate it for. Uh, you should it. not. Okay, for the love See, of God, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Wait, 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 wait. Dog, listen. Wait, wait. Even the <laughs> base level. Wait, wait, wait. wait come wait, on, wait. come off. Okay, need, I got water. Need, we go. Eris, Eris, need, no. need to watch season 11. If come you started on, on season one, come on. No. So if Where's you start, that? If so you started, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you well, sometimes season, shows fuck up. Sometimes shows fuck up. Yeah, they do. But How about that? People still watch it anyway. <laughs> you so, finished the dog right. on story. Time, time out, time out. You don't what need to. We, hold up. Y'all watching to Halo. Play, what did Halo 3 play. teach you? Finish the fight. To play devil's advocate in this situation. I really didn't watch any of season 11, and I didn't need season 11 to watch this. And technically, Ronan didn't watch exactly. any of the seasons. That he watched. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be exactly. fair, to, to be fair. Now, now if you want to, needed. if you want to complete the story, to Eris's point, that makes sense. If you want to engage with right. the, the sure. story and the narrative, of I, I talked to this of about people that are anime lovers. Like, I'm like, hey, you should watch this first season of this, even though the second season is better. You should do it. So you can get an understanding, even though yeah. like there are crazy things that are happening in this. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. like there's people that be like, oh, you, you should watch Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. I'm like, yeah, I've tried. Oh, you should skip the first like two seasons and that. It's like I can't do that, you know, as a viewer. It's like I need to be able to experience the entirety. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So it's like hard to know that people are skipping a bunch of. It's like, dude, so the walking, the walking dead used it used to be like the greatest fall show ever fucking created dog like it was just like the most pristine like you gotta run home and watch this shit and freak out about it type of thing and then it just <sighs> but anyway i digress because we're trying to finish up this episode so i'm gonna go across the ray so everybody can go and give a a to f rating and closing thoughts on the episode and why and then we'll keep it at most at length. I'll time everybody because some of y'all gonna go over long, uh, gushing about quick. it. Uh, <laughs> so we'll keep it to a minute. Your Gosh. final thoughts and your rating from A to F. Uh, Ronan, I'll let you go first. Uh, yeah, I had fun with this episode. This, this episode was a blast. Um, I'm very curious to see Jarrell's like the, the, the Alexandria cut, if you will. Um, uh, yeah, I would give it a. A minus, I think. Um, again, it, it, I'm a I'm the the odd one here because again, I had besides season one, I really haven't looked into it unless some big thing was blowing up in social media or in pop culture. Um, but it was a fascinating episode, and I'll say this: I want to watch episode two. Okay. All right. So next up, we got busy. What is your so rating and fun thoughts? That's an A. That's an A for me, man. I mean, I am so excited that we finally were able to watch this. Like I said, this is this was been, this is a comfort show for me. Like this is a show that really got me into television. You know, when I kind of needed it. You know what I'm saying? So I think I'm really biased, and I'm you know, it's just more of a personal thing. You know, but um, I get so enthusiastic talking about this. So to be able to see everything kind of happen the way it happened, the the brutality of it, just uh, meeting these new characters, it's just something that I'm really excited for and excited to see more of so i'm ready for episode two and i'm just i'm excited that we were able to i guess watch this as a group because i think it made it like 10 times better to hear everyone's opinions even jorel's because i mean like to be able to hear his thoughts and everything it's been fun i'm, I'm really excited that we were able to hear everyone's opinions because we got a little bit of everyone that you know we got fans we got people who aren't really familiar with it we got people who you know aren't fans you know it's just really it's fun you know and i, I i'm enjoying it <laughs> Yeah, if we if we get this done quick, we might go to the next episode. Next up, Jarrell. <laughs> Rating and closing thoughts. One minute. Okay. I I gave it like uh I, I give it like a four, a four out of ten. Okay, good night. Um wait, I uh, thought letters. And let it, what the whatever. <laughs> whatever 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 hey, whatever that's the That's an F, bro. That's an F. I, I guess I guess like a D, I suppose. Okay. Give it a D. <laughs> um, I don't know. It was a really bad premiere to a show that died around like six, seven years ago. But there were moments with Rick that um, I thought were kind of weirdly fun and curious what 
might happen next. Um, Wait, so are you saying you want that? to see the second episode? <laughs> I mean, I said I'm curious what's going to happen next with my boy Rick. No, I'm, I'm asking you. <laughs> I I guess shit. I I can't. I got this far. Well, the guess, episode did but... his guy's job did for a man. He quit this joint. Next last airs. I mean, I oh, said no. it was really. I, I prefaced it by saying it was really bad. But yes, I would like to see what happens next with Rick's very small thing, my nigga. But in fifty five minutes. But yeah, right, <laughs> buddy, Aaron. you experienced peak. It's okay. Don't let him bring you down. Aaron, <laughs> look at him. Last. Don't let me bring. Don't let me bring it down there. Oh no, you're not. I, I was just just waiting for you to finish. Listen, um, <laughs> this like, that's crazy. Listen, this is how you. This is how you start a show, especially for a spinoff. I'm glad Andrew Lincoln is back in his role, and I got what I wanted from. This first episode, which was character development, I wanted more color, uh, character development for Rick, and I got it. We're introduced to characters, like new characters. Uh, hell, interesting. Some of these characters are actually interesting, genuinely interesting. I want to know what happens to them. How long before you know they catch a bullet or a bite? It's either a bullet or a bite. Um, I'm I'm excited to see the next episode, and I'm giving this one. A straight A across the board. There you go. Told you I was okay. going to Okay. All right. So I guess I'm last on deck. As a man that gave up on The Walking Dead, and thanks to Eris, I looked at a few other um, spinoffs and got to watch this. This brought me a lot of joy. I'm not even going to lie. Like, I actually really enjoyed this episode, but for a lot of different ranges of reasons. And I think that the way that they even did the narration was very effectively different than what they've done in the past. Like one of the things I loved is those silent episodes that are just kind of closed in and that are so approachable, but personal. Rich is, Rick has never had those because he's always been the focal point. But this is the first one that felt like one of those focus-based episodes that are gonna expand to something more. And I don't know, man, like this was so good to me. Um, I'm just really surprised how much I liked it. And again, like I thought the Dead City was pretty decent. The episodes I watched of Daryl's show was okay. Um, the last episode with Negan in season 10 was actually pretty freaking dope. Um, but outside of that, I don't know if I'll ever go and watch season 11, but I can continue this and I absolutely want to continue to see where this goes. This was a fine A for me um i yeah i can nitpick but i don't have any definite reasons why i would hate this episode i, re I really don't i'm really intrigued to go through uh jarell's um breakdown discussion of the things that he specifically didn't like about it because when jarell was saying like oh i liked him cutting his arm off oh i liked the moment when he was going interacting with the guy i liked when well yeah i think well, this is so, this guy I'm, I'm 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 waiting for yours and when you do i will be up there i will comment i like and I'm there too, baby. Okay. So, so everybody show support to Drills out there. And even though he didn't like this episode, he did come out tonight, which is a rarity for a show that he absolutely hates. So <laughs> now we're ruined for him to turn on that camera. Uh, Gotta get yeah, the reactions. Yeah, no, nah, he'll never do that again. I, I've tried <laughs> to get him to do that for the past three years. Anyway, I digress. I'm gonna let everybody go and plug their content. First up on deck, the man with the plan, Ronan Unchained. Where can everybody find your content, man? Uh, you can find me at Ronan and Jane. Uh, right now, I should I say it? Fuck it, I'll say it. Right now, I'm working on dropping the reaction, my first reaction to Grounded to the making of The Last of Us. Um, be on the lookout for that. I'll be covering Last of Us till the end of times, and look out for uh, some Invincible and Star Wars stuff related coming around the year and travel plans as well. So hang tight, join, subscribe, and. Uh, I'm fucking, I'm gonna say it. I want to get 101,000 subscribers. That's what I want. Let's go. All right, bad batch. Next up, Busy. <laughs> What's up, Busy? Oh man, you find find me content? at Busy Braun everywhere. Uh, busy reactions on Instagram, and um, yeah, I mean, we're gonna be covering, hopefully, doing reactions for every episode. We've done reactions for like the last three seasons of the show for Daryl Dixon for um, Dead City. So I, I'm a huge Walking Dead fan, man, and. I'm really excited to be able to be here and actually discuss it with the group instead of watching it on my own. So it's been fun. 
Yeah, this is like traumatized. Like these old vets that used to love this show have been jaded by it. Thanks, Vizzy. <laughs> Thanks for coming out, man. Always, dude. And we got some dope content, uh, Halo content coming you guys way in between me and Vizzy. And hopefully some that. other shows too. Yeah, can't talk about that. And last but not least, well, actually, no, I got two people coming up. Uh, I'm not going to skip on you, Harris. Harris, where can everybody find your content, man? Yeah, I know where to find this. It's uh, Three Black Geeks. Literally Google Three Black Geeks, threeblackgeeks.com. We're on Spotify, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Every, like, you just type our name. Our links are in the <laughs> are in the description. Yeah, and again, I preface it like this. We would not be here today if Eris had not pushed it because I would have never done this. So thank you, Eris, everybody. This man been sitting on this thank, show. Thank you, Eris. This yeah, man, man was sitting. This man was sitting on this show for probably two, three months, and then announced, "Hey, I got the show. Why are we not watching this?" <laughs> Anywho, uh, last but not least, officially, Drell's Alexandria. Where can everybody find you? Uh, just as it is on the screen, Drell's Alexandria. That's like the main hub. Uh, my YouTube channel where we do reviews and similar style stuff to what Sam is doing. Um, uh yeah yeah Rick Grimes <laughs> my All boy right, you guys. he's back we're go- <laughs> he sounded excited we're going to go. <laughs> Make sure you like, subscribe to the bell button. Go down in the description bar below. Check out all these amazing people's art, uh, art and content, respectively. And we will be back for episode two. Whether or not Jarrell will be here. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>